and review all of that. And then, then, then next week's going to be the midterm, so we'll talk about things. We'll kind of do a review today. Right? And one of the things that we're going to do to help you, remember how I was saying that you got to go over these muscles and origin insertions different ways so that you can learn? What we're going to do today is we're going to do muscle testing. We're going to go through each of the different muscles and talk about, okay, how, what's the origin insertion? How are you going to manipulate or position that muscle to isolate that one to test it? So it's not something that you're going to have to know. You don't have to know muscle testing for this class. Okay? This is just a way of reviewing the muscles. And so that's what the, if you got, did anybody get these hand up? Okay. There's two handouts. One is, it goes through some of the muscles that we're going to cover. And it has pictures of how to do muscle testing. If it looks like these pictures are kind of old, it's because they are. You know, from a pretty old book here. Okay. And then the other handout is these, uh, has pictures of the nerves of the muscles. Right? It's this here. So if you remember I was saying that you don't have to know innervations of the muscles. But this is just a handout just for your own information so that you can be aware of what, what nerves go through the upper extremity, what muscles are innervated by those nerves. And then here on this other chart here, it have, talks about different spinal levels. Like it'll say that, um, and obviously we're not covering the lower extremity until, until the second half of the class. But like here, you have these here where it says the phrenic nerve, the C3, 4, 5. Okay? So that just means what nerve level is coming up from the neck. Okay? Again, these aren't things that you're going to have to be responsible for this class. It's just more information to be aware of. Because I mean, this basically is the anatomy is kind of the foundation of learning all the bones and muscles that you're going to use throughout as things go on. Okay? And we'll also go over some of the, make sure that you're aware of the different points in the body that you need to know. Because when you start doing point location, that's why you need to know all these different nooks and crannies of all the different bones, right? So like, for example, if you talk about uh, lung seven, it's on the radial aspect of the forearm, approximately one and a half cubic proximal to, in the cleft between the tendons of the brachioradialis and the ductor pollicis longus. So these different muscles that we're going to be studying, you need to know those to help you when you get to these points where you're going to have to say, okay, this, this acupuncture point is located next to this tendon, which is by this bone, which is by this, you know, all the different things we talked about before, like the tubercles, the fossas, the tuberosities, all that kind of stuff. And we already kind of talked about the humerus, so what we're going to do now is pretty much going to be some, some reviewing. Okay, right, so let's um, go ahead and start the... Yeah, I think the is kind of a skip on the anterior this is one of my and I'm not typical group because the tendon of the rock head of the bunch of it is in it. That the proximal end of the group is not the lesser tubercle and the greater tubercle. Because it's between two tubercles, the back of the group is also known as the inverse tubercular group. Down here on the lateral aspect of the genus, almost halfway down the boat, is the rest spot, the delta of tuberosity. Here's the shoulder joint, also known as the glenohumeral joint. This loose sleeve of tissue which encloses the joint is the child's capsule. The capsule doesn't hold the bones together. It's quite a weak structure. What it does is to permit movement. The structures which hold the two bones together are muscles, as we'll see. Here's the tendon of one of those muscles. Let's look at the movements that can occur at the shoulder joint. Movement forward and backward is called flexion. Movement downward and backward is called extension. Movement away from the side of the body is adduction. The opposite movement is adduction. Rotation which moves the front of the arm towards the body is internal rotation. Rotation the other way is external. 
level rotation. Now that we've taken a look at the bone, joints, and ligament, let's spend about a minute reviewing what we've seen so far. Here's the clavicle for an easy start. On the scapula, here's the blade, the glenoid fossa, the superglenoid and infraglenoid tubercle, the spine of the scapula, the supraspinous and infraspinous fossa, the acromion, and the coracoid fossa. Here's the proximal humerus with the head, the cubicle, and the ossa tubercle, the bicepital groove, and the deltoid tuberosity. Here's the sternal particular joint. And here's the acromial particular joint with the coli ligament and the trapezoid ligament. On the scapula, here's the glenoid labrum and the coracoacromial ligament. Lastly, here's the capsule of the shoulder joint. Metacarpal. 